Hello, Amish furniture fans, and welcome back to the Amish Furniture Podcast. It's nice to be back. Um, If you're following us, you know that we took a break for the holidays, and we hope that you did too, and that you were able to relax and rejuvenate in preparation for this new year. And I'm ready to jump into the podcast, so much so that we're going to start posting once episodes once a week. So look for us every Wednesday in your feed. How about you, Beth? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Milka. And it's great to be back. I'm ready to jump in too. But before we do, if you are tuning in for the first time, I'm Beth Rice, and I've been working for Dutch Crafters Amish Furniture for five years. And I'm Milka Rivera, and I have been working for Dutch Crafters, which was recently named a best online shop uh, for 2021 by Newsweek Magazine for four years. On the Amish Furniture Podcast, we bring you behind-the-scenes stories about what it's like to work with the Amish, tips about shopping for Amish furniture, and much more. On today's episode, we will be answering the question, do Amish women work in furniture woodshops? Ooh, good question. Yes. So you're probably aware that gender roles are more traditional and clearly defined in Amish communities than in American society more broadly, and this is true. However, you may be surprised by some of the things that you hear today. As with any religious or cultural group, there's a great deal of variation across the country, so we can't generalize Amish women's roles across every family, community, and woodshop. But today, we'll share some things we've learned and seen from our experience working with the Amish. Let's start with a few notes on women's roles in Amish life. Beth, in your post, um, Where the Women Are in Amish Woodshops on our Timber to Table blog, uh, you wrote that Amish women are wives, mothers, homemakers, and active members of their churches. They contribute to running households and making decisions for the home and family. Many Amish women branch out and work outside the home, creating their own businesses. It's not unheard of for them to make and sell handcrafted items like quilts or to run restaurants, bakeries, or produce stands. And you know that we've gotten to sample plenty of Amish baked goods and yeah. and things like that. Um, in our in the Dutch Crafter store, we also have some of the smaller decor items like the um, pot holders and the uh, handcrafted quilts and things mm-hmm. like that. I'm curious if our listeners, you know, if they've visited Amish country and visited some of those roadside stands where those delicious goodies are, um, you know, what they've tested and what they've eaten and what they've tried that have come from, you know, a lot of Amish women's kitchens, Mm -hmm. um, often with recipes that have been passed down throughout their family for generations. Um, It certainly is not unheard of for them to take those skills beyond the home and and contribute to, to a business. Yeah, for sure. I guess the question is, we're going back to our question is, do Amish women work in furniture wood shops? And the answer is, yes, they do. Um, we've been told about their roles in the wood shops. And we've also seen for ourselves uh, women at work at several different positions in the Amish wood shops. So, Beth, when you visited some of our uh, wood shops in Ohio and in your work as a content writer, um, where have you seen women working in the wood shops or heard stories? Yes, I did get to go on um, one of the company trips to visit Amish country and uh, observe the the furniture making process. We talked about this in some earlier episodes of our podcast uh, about visiting the wood shops, um, specifically observing the women there. Um, I got to uh, see them in some different roles. Um, there was one wood shop where they were working on Amish dining chairs and the women were there alongside the men. Um, they were working on the chair seats because, you know, we, um, Amish, the Amish craftsmen, they put a lot into scooping out the seat and refining the seat to make sure it's really comfortable. They were sanding them and refining the seats. They, they were standing over these machines and we did talk about some of the machinery used in Amish wood shops 
again, in um, one of our earlier podcasts, uh, it's certainly not a shortcut as we talked about mm-hmm. then, but it is helped to make more precise uh, cuts. It's for precision and the, and the best quality. Uh, but they were, the women were there working um, at the machines, refining the seats, sanding them, inspecting them. They worked with shaping some of the table legs. One of the shops that we went in, I believe it was the shop uh, that makes chairs for the Prairie Collection. We got to see where some of the glue ups were done and things like that. Then we moved over to another area and there were women working on some of the chair legs and table legs. And um, they would have this square piece of wood, took each chair leg, it had already been cut and measured to the length that was needed, and they would shape the leg. And then they were inspecting it, turning it over and over and seeing if it needed to be run through again, or if any more hand sanding needed to be done to refine it. So it was interesting to see they were really comfortable with what they were doing and making table and chair leg parts. That's really cool. I also saw them using routers um, to smooth out poly outdoor furniture. The uh, poly is made from the recycled uh, plastics. Mm -hmm. And um, so they were, they were busy in the shops. They were working on um, some upholstery also. They were sewing, bringing their sewing skills to the table, so to speak. And uh, they were working on cushions for outdoor furniture and some of the custom upholstery for the dining chairs. What roles have you seen or have you heard about Amish women working in um, in the wood shops? Yeah, so we wrote a guest post um, on Eric Wesner's uh, site about Amish culture. It's called Amish America. You can find it at AmishAmerica.com. And it was called Amish Women in Furniture Making. And I heard, you know, very similar things to you. The main thing I heard that they are mainly employed in the office, so you might find them like answering the phones and emails if that technology is available there because there are some shops that don't have that technology. Um, you know, they're processing purchase orders, helping with billing and bookkeeping as well. Um, I got to go to a show in Indiana, and when I was there, there were two booths that especially stood out to me at this show. And it turned out that the wife of the wood shop owner, she decorated the booth. And there was one in particular where she had created, she had him create like a candy station for the booth. So he built the table for them. It also had like, you know, coffee on it and everything. And then over this solid wood table that he had built specifically for the show, she asked him to build like this rustic ladder that then had these lights hanging from it. It was beautiful and really rustic looking. And, you know, she got the inspiration from something that she'd seen in a magazine and then asked him to build it for her. Oh, wow. Um, she also, I believe, helps with some of the furniture design because she gets some of the inspiration from magazines that she sees and she will pass them on to him and be like, hey, build this table or something similar to it. She also did all the decoration for the different dining tables. And she said that it's just one of her favorite things to do, you know, just coming up with these different designs. Well, several shop owners, I think, have I've also heard had said that they hire Amish women to help with inspecting furniture as well as like standing and finishing the furniture. The wood shop owners say that it's because women are all about the details and you have to be very detail oriented to do that stuff. So like sanding, pre-sanding, the finishing, anything in the assembly process, it's like finer details, um, things like hanging doors and installing drawer guides. Um, You know, you mentioned the upholstering, uh, the cushions and the seating. That was something else that I heard about. But one of the main things that I heard when I called some of our shops and I said, you know, I was asking them about some of the responsibilities that are given to women and, you know, why those responsibilities in particular. And most of them said that they're just meticulous when it comes to paying attention to those details. And that also, since women tend to have smaller hands, they can really focus on some of those smaller details better as well. You mentioned Eric Wessner, uh, and in a post on his site, um, it's called Five Jobs Done by Amish Women, he mentions that he has been told by at least one Amish furniture business owner that that owner prefers women for spraying finish on wood. In his opinion, they have better finesse at applying the coating. He recognizes and appreciates that, that eye for detail. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the eye for detail. And I know that all, I know our Amish craftsmen, they all, the men, of course, as well, pay attention to detail. I mean, that's Amish furniture and the features that it offers. I mean, 
part of what makes it, sets it apart from the rest is the attention to the details. Yeah. And I think we reached out to a few people that we work with who have been to the wood shops as well. And we heard from one of our product managers, Steve, that a lot of times the women will be in charge of the inspecting process as well. And again, it goes to those details because they're able to catch those details. And he mentioned how super quick they are at it too, you know, and he was just kind of surprised by that because you would think that if you're inspecting something, I feel like I would spend tons of time like looking at everything, trying to make sure, you know, and he said that they were catching things like super quick if there was any sort of issue. So yeah, again, that attention to detail. It's important and it makes a difference in the furniture. For sure. Also something that I've heard is actually, I heard this when I went up to, when I got to go to that woodworking show in Indiana, I remember our CEO, Jim, mentioning to me that a lot of the times the shops are named after the husband and wife who founded it and own it. Um, so an example would be like J&R Woodworking. It's like the, the first initials of the couple who own the shop. Um, and typically in these companies, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, is that the wife often plays a pivotal role in the company, even long after marriage, when women would traditionally stop working. I mentioned, I think, in one of our previous episodes that I got to have dinner with one of our woodworkers. And it was a husband and wife team. And really, I learned this from Jim. She is really the matriarch of the family and the one that is running the business. And Jim said that she more or less runs the show and that she's also one of the prominent woodworkers in the area. So other companies pay attention to her and what she's doing. I love that. Yeah. When our woodworkers come and visit us here in Sarasota, it's often a husband and wife team. They come together. There's a, there are always goodies for us to to enjoy, baked goodies. And yeah. uh, while the husband usually um, does a lot of the talking and explaining the new features, the wives have contributed also to the discussion at times. And I like that we get to interview them afterwards and speak with both of them. And the women are you know, they're very knowledgeable about what's going on with between the furniture making. And as you said, Milka, you know, a lot of the goings on of the business in the shop itself, the administrative work. Yeah, you're right. I hadn't even really thought about that. The fact that they often do come as, as a pair, they come as the husband and wife team. And that a lot of times, you know, when you'll ask questions, the wives are able to answer the questions as well. So they clearly know, you know, what's going on in the business. Definitely. Yes. So in, in the blog post that you wrote for our Timber to Table blog, which we talked about earlier, uh, you know, where we, Amish women are in the wood shops, uh, you also noted the roles that gender plays um, other ways in the wood shops. Will you speak a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, with um, In the Amish wood shops, some of the things that I noticed also along gender lines, um, I think the most interesting was we were shown the lunchroom area um, and the women... Um, have a separate lunch. The women and men have separate lunchrooms. And that's one thing that we saw that you don't really see in other workplaces across the country. It's the women's lunchroom. It's separated from the men's. In some of our smaller wood shops, you might not find a separate uh, women's lunchroom and men's lunchroom. It, they might both eat in the same lunchroom, but at separate tables. Um, the idea is to um, limit socializing between genders. And um, I think that uh, falls in line with community expectations of, of the Amish. Um, but interesting, interesting to note. It is interesting. I, I remember being fascinated by that in that in the blog post that you wrote for our blog. You also took a bunch of great pictures while you were on that trip. And you can find photos of what the Amish women are wearing while they're working in the wood shops, as well as I think you took a photo of, you know, two of the separate rooms, you know, for at lunchtime, one for the women and one for the men. Yes. So yeah, that is really interesting. Some people are might be curious what the women are wearing in the in the wood shops. And as men have a typical Amish men have a typical work attire with suspenders and their traditional attire um, when they report to work in the shop, the women are usually seen in their um, traditional dresses, the long solid colored dresses um, with their kappa prayer covering they, that they wear. And they wear sneakers um, to keep their, you know, feet protected in the um 
shop with all the nails and saws and, <laughs> and saws. Yeah. So, um, there are not as many women in the shops as men. Um, and that is because they typically leave, um, working in the shops once they get married, once they get married, they, um, focus on children and, and raising a family. Um, but those were just a few things that stood out um, along gender lines in the in the shops. So again, you know, as we close out with any religious or cultural group, um, there's a great, very a great deal of variation across the country. So we can't generalize Amish women's roles across, you know, every family community and wood shop, as we mentioned earlier in the episode. But this is a topic that we often get asked about. So we wanted to share with you all what we've heard and seen throughout the years in partnership with the Amish wood shops that we work with. Amish furniture fans, if you have any stories about Amish women's roles in the wood shops and other areas, we would love to hear from you. Please send your stories and questions to podcast at dutchcrafters.com so we may share them with your fellow listeners in a future episode. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like or leave a review and be sure to subscribe and catch new episodes every Wednesday. And we'll have some special guests who know a lot more than us about the Amish in the coming weeks. So be sure to subscribe. So exciting. We've got so many great uh, things ahead. Thank you for tuning in. Until next week. Bye.